2 Kings chapter 10, verse 18. 6 plus 6 plus 6. And Jehu gathered all the people together, unity, and said unto them, Ahab served Baal a little, the false god, one of the chief deities, he's the god of the, the harvest and grain of the land of Cana. But Jehu shall serve him much. So, and he's, he's, he's got a trick up his sleeve. Now, therefore, call unto me all the prophets of Baal. So let's look at number one. Baal has prophets. Baal has a gathering of people. All his servants. Baal has servants. Listen, you can say you're in a church of God. So is Baal. And what we're going to look at tonight is, and yeah, you're going to say I'm bashing the Catholics, I'm bashing the religion, but here it is. 2 Kings chapter 10 with Judges and all the other places that we've read so far, and we haven't even finished the Bible. We're about, about a quarter away of the Old Testament. And here it is. Here's a church show up in a date, which is better than any day I can come up, B.C. 884. And here it is, Old Testament Long before Jesus Christ, Isaiah has not even prophesied that a, a virgin shall conceive seed. And we're going to look at a religion. And if your religion fits in what we're studying tonight, God's angry with you. You are not right. So here's Baal. He's got prophets. Prophets tell the future. Prophets were of Ahab, of Jezebel. Two characters in the Bible you do not want to be associated with. And all his servants, they will serve Baal. They will give Baal money. They will give Baal their, their time. They will do anything for Baal. And his priests, non-Levitical priests that are in the Old Testament where we are right now. These are not the priests of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Levi, Aaron. These are priests that have been made up by man. They are not godly priests. They are small g-o-d-l-y priests. Do you know somewhere where they've got servants and prophets and priests of a god? Let none be wanting, for I have a great sacrifice to do to Baal. All right? There's a sacrifice. Giving. Giving up something. Sacrifice is when you take something of you, and you give it to others, and you become lacking. Money, time, effort. Let Baal not be wanting. Let none of his priests be wanting. Let's surprise his priests. Whosoever. Oh, look at that. Now let's look at the imitation. Whosoever. Let's look at God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe it. Now look at the terminology. It's there in the religion. You can go up to him and say, have you received Jesus Christ? Yeah, I received Jesus Christ. And there would be a different receiving. There's a different priest. There's a different sacrifice. The words are the same. But all they have different meanings that will not lead you to glory. If I were to ask a Catholic, did you receive Jesus Christ? And he will say yes, honestly, from his heart. And his receiving would be by mouth at the Mass. That's not the way. See, we can't take people at face value of their mouth. We got to study. We got to examine. When you go to the doctor and say, doctor, I have a sore throat. Well, he's going to ask you questions. He's going to evaluate you. He's going to give you tests. He's going to find out and rule out 
all the things that are not causing that sore throat to get you to find out what is causing the sore throat. Whosoever shall be wanting, he shall not live. But Jehu did it subtly. That's what the devil did in Genesis 3. He's got trickery. He's not doing it with a full heart. He's going to do it right way, but a wrong way. And Paul said, I've caught you with guile. Paul kind of put him in a trap. Sometimes you got to do that when you're dealing with people. And the biggest way you can do that when you've you got a, any public ministry, and I mean public ministry, knocking on doors, street preaching, talking to people, passing out gospel tracts, whatever, witnessing to your co-workers, your family, you got to let them talk. And when they talk, they will reveal the truth. By yaka yaki naki. To the intent that he may destroy the worshipers. Well, look at that. He's got worshipers. We worship God. But not the right God. I'm a Christian. And according to the Bible, you may not be a Christian. You've got a definition of Christian that does not match the scripture. And in some cases, those who profess to be Christians, their history of their organization has killed Christians. And they have no idea what Christians are. Yet the terminology is there and it sounds right. You see how slick Satan is. And Jehu said, proclaim a solemn assembly for Baal. Look at that. We're going to have solemn. He also has assembly. Assembly of God. Jehovah Witness Assembly. Look up on the internet and do the word on the internet. Google whatever you got and put assembly and church. Well, church of God. Assembly of God. They're going to, the first one is going to come up. But then as you go further and further down, you're going to start seeing, well, our church has this assembly. And churches are starting to go to that thing. It used to be when I was in school, was like, okay, we're going to have assembly in the gym. We're going to have assembly in the cafeteria because somebody's going to speak to us. Somebody's got a movie for us or something like that. And they're moving to that assembly in the church. And when you start using that word assembly in the religion form of gathering together, you are doing it for bail. I didn't check that word. Yeah, I should, as far as the New Testament uses, but let me see. Assembly is a, is a, it's a religious doctrine word. Let me check here. And I'm going through right now, Psalms, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. All right, you got Acts. Uh, Acts 19.32. It says, some therefore cried one thing and some another, for the assembly was confused. That's over Diana, a false god. But inquire a thing concerning other matters. Oh, this is stupid. Acts chapter 19. It'd be determined for a lawful assembly. Acts 19.41, they dismissed the assembly. Now, Hebrews 12.23, Hebrews written to Hebrews, the general assembly, the church of the firstborn. Are we stealing the, when we say a hem, a, a assembly in the church, are we stealing that Jewish? Remember, Hebrews is written to Hebrews. And I'm restudying Hebrews because uh, I'm quite, things going on with that. But there is assembly in the church of the firstborn, which is written in heaven. And then you have James chapter 2, if there come unto you assembly, a man of gold ring and goodly apparel, and there cometh a poor man, and it likens of a rich man and a poor man. And you can find, like I said, do a Google search. Church and assembly. Assembly of Baal. That's assembly of God. They're not the God of the Bible. They don't practice that of what the Bible says. They just got a different name. And they proclaimed it. Proclamation. And Jehu sent through all Israel, 
north. And all the worshipers of Baal came. Time to have church. Ding, ding, ding. Read the bells. Everybody come. And they're all coming. So that there was not a man left that came not. Oh, I wish my church had all its people come. Well, everybody came to Baal. Why do people serve Baal more than they serve God? Because in God, we got a security. No matter what I'm doing, I'm saved. I ain't going to lose it. Under the works of religion, if I don't do something, I'm in trouble. If I don't burn, if I don't pay, if I don't pray, if I don't penance, I don't, I'm in trouble with that God. And the God says, I must come to church to get things right, midnight mass and Christmas, and then the uh, uh, Easter service. Man, if you don't come to at least those two services, you're in trouble. That's why they all come. That's why you got these mega churches and everybody comes, because you got to do something to please God. And yet we read by Paul, he writes, listen, God wants a cheerful giver. If you go to church because you want to, you want to serve the Lord, and there are some days you can't make it, there are some days, you know, you got to make, just unable to go, not feeling well, maybe gas money, something like that, and, you know, your heart's doing it. You're not sinning against God by not going to church. What do you do when you got somebody who loves the Lord? They're saved, and they're doing right, and there is no church. There's no way to get to church. There's no one going out trying to start a church. What do you do in that case? And then if you go to church because I have to, because, I, because you know, my mother's making me, my girlfriend, my boyfriend's making me, or the God that I'm serving says, if I am not here this two times a year, if I'm not here into the assembly, I'm in trouble with God. I'm going to have to serve time in some kind of punishment, time out kind of God, whatever it is. That's not cheerful giving. That's the big difference between religion and serving God. It's from the heart, or is I have to do it. And they came, ready for this one, into the house of Baal. We're in the house of God. There's the house of Baal. Everybody come to the church house. The church is not a house. The church is not a building. The church is not wood. It's not stone. It's not brick. It's the people. And you forget Jesus said, where there are two or three amongst uh, in my name, I'm in amongst them. Listen, a father, husband, mother, wife, and child can be a church. Did you go to church Sunday? No, I go to church seven days a week and I train my family in the Bible. I don't need a youth group. I don't need any other church activities. I'm trying to do what God has put me to do for my family. That's a church. How are you doing with your family? Oh, you go Sunday morning, you go Sunday night, you go midweek service. How are you raising your, your wife and your children in your house? Oh, you're going to come up short, maybe. There's a house of Baal. Now remember, Baal's a god. Small G-O-D. And there's a house of God. It's a complete imitation. Satan has an imitation salvation of artificial preservatives called works. God has a salvation that is ingredients. Here's the ingredients of God's salvation. Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. And was buried. And rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That is the ingredients. That is the natural ingredient. The blood of God. Acts 20.28. 20, now what is the artificial ingredients of Satan and his religion? Works. Money. Charity. Attendance. Membership. We are seeing God in the real, but in 2 Kings chapter 10, we are seeing the imitation. God's not even mentioned here. It's Baal. And the house of Baal was full from one end to the other. Now all oh, preachers, oh, I wish my church was full. I w if everybody who have ever been in this church would again, it would be here. 
No, they got a full attendance here and they're not there for God. I mean, uh, listen, I have come to the point, I have, in my ministries, in public ministries, I, in a prison, I sat before three people learning the Bible. My family, my wife and my daughter, two people. I rather have two or three people love the Lord and do right. I got a Wednesday Bible study outside of my family. There's one person that comes and wants to work. I rather have all that. Now, I'd rather have 250,000 people there and they just don't care about God. I got one. I got one who wants to learn, joy and learning, growing and all that. I'll help him. Well, I guess a lot of people get you a lot of money. Prestige. Look how many people I had in Sunday school. And he's. This is Jesus who said unto him that was over the vestry. That's the only place vestry shows up. I don't have a vestry. Every once in a while, you know, I have teachers. They're very, very well worn. My wife said, you need to get some new teachers. I love them. They're comfortable. And there comes time to, for these videos. I say, I got to put my clerical t-shirt on. So I look good. Suit and tie. Where did that come from? Someone have trouble selling suit and ties that they have to sell people on. You know, suits and ties are wonderful because I'm going broke. That's exactly what the Catholic Church did with eating fish on Friday. The fishermen were starving to death. And they went up to Mr. Pope on the rope and said, oh, please make a, something so we can sell fish. Oh, okay. Here's the decree of the church. Everybody must eat fish. Thank you, sir. That's the same politics that happens in politics in Washington, D.C. Hey, if I throw you a little money, can you make a law? Hey, listen, people are not buying auto insurance. If you make it a law, come, I know, listen, bring the best clothes you can, okay? But you really think that God's going to, because he's wearing a suit and tie? I wouldn't wear shorts. But I've sat in blue jeans and in a t-shirt or a long sleeve shirt and t taught the word of God and opened this and been blessed. That's the only time vestry shows up. Bring forth vestments. And the, <coughs> excuse me. It's only two places and it's in this verse. Now do a search. Roman Catholic Encyclopedia or Catholic Vestments, and there, uh, especially Waikiki, the, 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 the online encyclopedia, there is like pages and pages of all the junk they wear. For a show. And again, we're getting into this feigning, we're getting into this show business that in the back room that there's a bunch of costumes that we have to put on. Now, we, we were giving out gospel tracts to people attending the, the, the Christmas uh, uh, Mass last night. I guarantee those priests took a, quite a bit of time to put their, their we didn't go into church, but I guarantee they takes a lot of time to put all that robes and junk on. And then we make fun of the Jehovah Witnesses who have their holy underwear. And yet the Baptist Church said their holy suit and tie. Am I against suit and ties? I don't know. You do it without them. I think you dress respectfully for the Lord. Paul didn't have a suit and tie. We dress Mary in this blue, richly garb of a woman who was poor, had to bring two turtle doves. Thou shalt not wear what pertaineth to a woman, says to the man in the Bible, they wore skirts. And yet we cannot preach the fact is when a woman's on a beach, she's got a bikini. Why don't you just tell us the truth? She's wearing her bra and panties in public. Got a problem with clothing. They brought forth investments for all the worshipers of Baal. Well, look at that. The people had their clothing. The church provided it, it looks like. 
and I should have looked it up, but I didn't. But when Jacob is about to go back to Bethel and get right with God, he said, all these images, all these gods, come on, let's bury them beneath the tree. And then he turned around and told the people, change your clothes. That's back in Genesis. Now, we saw some people last night dedicated to their God Catholic, and they were wearing shorts and stuff. I mean, I wouldn't wear that to church. But here's a church here that they have their own clothes. And do you not know religions that say you must wear these garbs? The Muslims say women got to wear those pukas or parkas, whatever you call them. The Church of Christ says, well, the women have to wear it all the way down to, the, you know, this bone in the in the wrist and all the way down to that bone in the feet and all that. And if you love the Lord and want to do right, you'll dress right. For all the worshipers of Baal. And he brought forth the vestments. So. And Jehu went. And Jehan of Dab, that he's mentioned back in verses 15, 16, the son of Rechab, Rechab, into the house of Baal, and said unto the worshippers of Baal, addressing the people, How dare you go to the Catholic Church and give them gospel church? That's that's what Jehu did. And he was commencing with the people. We were talking with them, we listened to them. Search and look that there be here with you none of the servants of the Lord Jehovah. All right, we're in this congregation. Make sure there are no... Listen, we read Paul in the, in the New Testament. What concord do you have with Belial and with Christ? What have you to do with unbelievers and believers? Jesus was like, make sure there are no people of God in this place, only of small G-O-D. Now, the Baptist churches did that. Make sure there's no unbelievers here and only people are going to serve the Lord and do right and we can teach them the scriptures. Where you do not get a gospel message every Sunday morning. And they don't grow. As I've been told by a Southern Baptist church. Every Sunday morning we get the gospel plan of salvation. Well, you've heard it so many darn times, but you got no growth. There's a separation. Jehu says, let's separate from those of Jehovah and let's separate those of Baal. How's that in the Old Testament? But the worshiper of Baal's Baal only. And when they went to offer sacrifice, well, look, there's the offering sacrifices. They passed the plate and burnt offerings, just like God had. Baal has his sacrifices and his burnt offerings. Catholics have a have a, a shepherd, but it's not my shepherd. Jehu appointed four score men without, that'd be 20, 80 men, who are not a part of the assembly, without. They're not Baal worshippers. They didn't go to Baal church. And said, if any of the men whom I brought into your hands escape, all right, what we're going about to do, if any man leaves this building, they get away from him. He that leadeth, I can read some of these. That's the first time that word shows up. He that leadeth him go, his life shall be for the life of him. I, am, I do not want one Baal worshiper to get away. You know that's what God's going to do? God is not going to allow any worshippers of Satan, self, science, and education into the glory of New Jerusalem. Not even one. If you're to, if during the church age, from the time of the book of Acts until the rapture of the church, if you have not been washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, you've got some other way. You are not going to be in the presence of God, you are stuck in Baal's church and God will deal with you. And there would be even no command to any of the angels, anybody, no, you're not going to get out of it. 
And what we're learned by Jehu right now is there's no general resurrection. There's no general judgment that all will go in. No, there is a classification of the worshipers of Baal and the worshipers of Jehovah. And it came to pass as soon as he had made an end of the offering, the burnt offering, that Jehu said to the guard and to the captains, go in and slay them. <gasps> Did you hear that there was this church shooting? There were people killed in church? Did you not read your Bible, 2 Kings chapter 10? Here's a church where people were killed. That's not new news. There it is. Here's a man under the authority of God, destroying men who worship not God. In the Old Testament, I wouldn't do it under the New Testament, but there it is. These are people that rejected God and they're getting judgment of death. We are in the nation of Israel. We are in a kingdom of the Jews where there will be a king of kings and lord of lords. And by the law, it is God only in this land. And there's anything else but God, you get rid of it. Jehu is doing what the law has said to do. This is exactly what Paul did. Paul saw the law and said these people are bringing about this false god. They are denying the God of the Old Testament. I need to kill them. I will go to the high priest with the law. I'm going to go kill these Christians because they are violating the law until he met Jesus on the road. And whatever you think, these men are sinners. They are sinning. God does not hate the sin and love the sinner. He's saying, Jehu, get rid of them. Now, we're not to do that. Though there's something there about the government of a Christian nation that allows worshipers of a false god, but in the act of freedom. And we've had not really no revivals in this country. Since we said you can go ahead and serve whatever God you had. Matter of fact, as a result of the Constitution, the right of freedom of religion, Jesus Christ has been kicked out of the schoolroom. Jesus Christ has been kicked out of the courtroom. You cannot pray. You cannot bring your Bible. You cannot have nothing to do with Jesus Christ as children get on their prayer mats and face Mecca and pray to you in the zombie mood of Hindu and all other gods. And that the fact is, I am 50 years old. I grew up in the school system. Every Friday we had fish. That's religious. And if I were to go in there with a Bible, they would call the SWAT team in. They would call the ACLU. They would call the NNACP. They would call everybody they can to get that Bible out. But they probably still serve fish. Probably still serve fish. In America, where we have the freedom of religion. And we're going to join these public school ministries where children are getting saved, but the Bible and prayer is not allowed. I don't know. Something wrong with that one. But here it is. Here is a church killing in the Bible. I am not promoting it. I am not saying do it, but there it is. It's not new. And the fact is, when you go crazy because, oh, these church shooters, if you read your Bible, there it is. Now, they're not shooting. They're using a sword. Wait till God breaks his sword that comes out of his mouth, Revelation 19. Wait till God, Revelation chapter 20, if your name is not in the Lamb's book of life. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. God knows Jehu for a while. He's going to blow it. Wow, he said, look what you're doing. You're blasting church. Yes, because they're not worshiping God. Now, we went to a bunch of Catholics. We gave them the gospel. We didn't beat them up. We didn't shoot them. We didn't kill them. We didn't kick no idols over. We didn't blast nobody. I didn't even preach. We gave out gospel tracts. If I was going to preach and the way I preach, I probably offended them. They probably would never taken any gospel tracts. 
I wasn't mean. I wasn't cruel. I sat there with a the camera recording it all. The great blessing that we have on YouTube to see 38 minutes of people taking tracks, and only very few did not take them. And maybe Christmas, today's Christmas, maybe today, instead of Jesus Christ being born, maybe there was a new name written down in heaven. Maybe somebody got the new birth on December 25th. We had a man get saved on October 31st. They can be saved. But we're in a kingdom. We're under God as, as the ruler of the nation, and God does not allow this. And rest assured, what do I get out of 2 Kings chapter 10 for me? When I get to New Jerusalem, this mess will not be allowed. You want to worship devil? You go to his place, hell. Then the lake of fire that burns for That's That's the devil's place. That's Baal's place. That's church's place. God separates. And smote them with the edge of the sword. And the guard and the captains cast them out, cast them out, dead bodies, and went to the city of the house of Baal. Oh, he's got a city. Do you know a religious religious organization that has a city? Ooh. But you see, the universal church started with the apostle Peter. It did not. It started BC 884. Peter's great 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 somewhere along the line grandfather hasn't even been born yet. Don't give me that nonsense that we are founded upon the apostles and Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, he hasn't even been prophesied yet as far as the virgin birth of Isaiah. And there it is. City. And that city in that area would have been Bethel. You know what Bethel was? House of God, the city of, I mean, the, the children of Dan, Dan was up north, Dan were the Sodomites and judges, but a city, a city of the house of Baal, wow, isn't that interesting, do you know how many religions came out of California and New York in America? And they brought forth the image. Uh-oh. Have we not Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, have we not got the idea that God is against aids of worship? That picture of Jesus you hold so dear is not Jesus. That picture of Mary or Jesus that has their heart hanging out, they're dead. If I sat here with my heart sticking out of my chest right now, I would not be talking to you about 911, please. But that little guy going around shooting you in the heart, you're dead. My true love is dead by the naked little thing flying around and shot him with an arrow. Images of religion is a sin and they brought forth the image out of the house of Baal and burnt it or them them there's more than one you know I gotta wonder and this you can throw in a garbage can but you ever wonder these images of Baal if they look like the images of Jesus today they draw just wondering So they had a picture of Baal to help. Their Bible, and throughout the pages of their Bible, there was a picture of Jesus holding a lamb. There's a picture of Jesus preaching to the people on the beach. There's a picture of Paul. He's the, uh, There was no Polaroids back then. Jesus Christ was so despised by the world that he says, Marvel not the world. Hey, do you realize of all the artists in that area, no one ever drew a picture of Jesus? Not no one? Not even the cavemen? Wait to the image I see Jesus Christ. Like I, I, I preach too. When the rapture happens, many born again Christians. At the rapture, when we go meet Jesus, they're going to have a heart attack because they're not going to know who he is. And yet we got a picture, a perfect picture of Jesus, the, the Song of Solomon, Revelation. And they're not even going to know who Jesus is. 
They're going to think he's some Hollywood white man. He ain't white, first of all. He's Jewish. And they break down the image of Baal. How do you break down an image if it's a, if it's a painting, if it's a drawing? It's got to be some kind of molten kind of statue aid of worship. They break it down. So there are pictures of photographs and art, and there are images of statues and relics of Baal. Well, they really head into Baal. And break down the house of Baal. Look at that. You know what Jesus Christ is going to do when he... When he comes back, he's going to break down all the houses of false worshipers. There will be not be one house of Baal standing. Now, I said, I am not going to say in a new church age today that we are in the New Testament. Go breaking down. Go get rid of. You no, know, we don't do that. We witness to him. We tell him about Jesus. But look at what he's doing. Without a building permit, he, he has, without demolition, he has destroyed the house of, of Baal and made it a draught house. That's the first time that word shows up. And that word has a few meanings. It has to do, one of the meanings is where you put your fish nets. That may not be it. I don't know. That, there's another mean, means which will tie into what we are going to talk about tonight is means drain you know that thing that's in your bathtub you know that thing that's in your sink and the water goes goes down where does that waste water go it goes to the sewer what did he turn this house of bail he turned it into a drain sewer house this is where they put all the caca all the doo-doo you know, when they washed the streets back then, they would flood the whole streets with water. The pigs would eat, the dogs would eat, scat, and they'd wash the streets down. And when they would wash the streets down, they'd wash it just, okay, right where the, the church of Bell, water, throw that garbage in the, the soil. You won't believe some of the things they did. I mean, in England, they, they would throw their chamber pot right out the window. That's why men walked on the left side of the women. The woman walked on the right side so the woman wouldn't get hit. You ever think getting getting hit by bird poo-poo? Imagine that someone emptied a chamber park. They would throw meats and scraps like that out the window. This is New York City now. There are pictures of New York City where pigs are running around eating the trash. They made it a trash house. That's what they made it. They made it a dump. That's what Jehu thought of Baal in his house. He made it a dump. And Jehu destroyed Baal out of Israel. Now, how's that? And that pleased God. Now, as Christians, we were to go do that, that would not please God today. If we go witness to them, and they believe on Jesus Christ, the angels in heaven will rejoice. If they were to reject the gospel, Jesus said, vengeance is mine. I will repay. Don't you go killing them. Don't you go tearing them down. But I'll take care of it. But I've known a few churches where they've gotten a, a, a place of worship. It used to be a bar. And they would have, they had a day with fellowship where they would come in and they all take turns whacking that bar in pieces. You know, the, the Spirit's God. And they would cleanse that place and set it for the Lord. Made it use of the Lord. Jehu said, "Is completely destroy it and make it for dump. And I think that would be a good place to end tonight.